can you create wealth by buying businesses? So in this video, I want to break down some of the reasons why I think buying and selling companies is probably the fastest way to growing your wealth. Now, for the most part, you guys are probably thinking, hey, Ali, I don't have the money. I don't have a lot of savings, uh, let alone the credit capacity to go out there or maybe even assets to go and start buying and selling companies. It takes cash. It takes a lot of money. And the truth is, it doesn't really take a lot of money. In fact, you can actually buy companies for a dollar. Sometimes they'll even pay you to take over. But the idea is you have to understand and position yourself to be able to do that in a very comfortable way. You have to have the confidence. You have to be high conviction within yourself to look and go out there and think about what some of the things you can do in order to go ahead and buy into that company. So in today's video, I want to break down five ways that you should look at when it comes to acquisitions to build your wealth. The very first thing I think that you should consider is the idea of, you know, move your thoughts outside of the box. The most people, what they do is they go into this business realm and space. And the first thing they want to do is they want to buy a business with money, with cash, with credit, with a lot of debt. And the problem with that is you probably could, you can be well off by doing these type of things and you can execute a transaction but you'll be limited. The reason why you'd be limited is because you can only do a small amount of deals, you know, based on whatever you have. So if you're using transactions and going after businesses to buy them based on the amount that you're having or access to, the scope of what you can get done is very limited. So let me break that down for you. So let's assume you have perfect credit rating, right? Let's say you have an 800 credit score. Let's assume you have decent credit history. So you can leverage that as a means to go into a transaction. The other thing you have to keep in mind is if you want to get cash lines, right? Not credit cards, but cash lines of credit or some sort of capacity where you can use them as cash, then you need to focus on putting personal guarantee. And then of course you have to provide income documentation. In most cases, if you want a hundred thousand, 200,000, which is the typical nature of the deposit you'll need in order to buy a successful business from that context, right? Once you go through that phase, what you're doing is basically tying yourself up to one business based on the resource and your credit. And that's a very dangerous position to be in because you're basically putting yourself at a boundary that you're going to have a hard time crossing unless you pay that all the debt out. And in most cases, it takes time and years before a business debt can be paid back, sometimes five, sometimes 10 years. So if this is the only factor that you're depending on to go out there and buy businesses, then you're not going to be, you're not going to go far, right? So that's the first thing, right? A lot of people want to buy with debt, but you know, it's not necessarily the best idea. There are alternatives to that. Let's talk about the second point. The second point is, okay, now you want to buy businesses. Okay. You learned, okay, maybe the debt is not the best way. Once you're in the business, you've done a deal, right? You have a, done a transaction and you see for a fact that debt can actually help increase the capacity of that business or possibly the value uh, by simply adding assets to it, which is like a self liquidating process, right? The assets themselves generate revenue, which takes care of the debt plus gives you more cash. Uh, in that context, it's a good idea to use debt. So the second point I want to talk about is, okay, now you know debt is not a good idea. When we move on to the concept of, okay, what else can we do to go and do an acquisition space? The first thing you need to really be positioned by is the idea of understanding what the other side needs. A lot of people go into the acquisition space thinking that, hey, I'll just toss my information out there, tell the business owner that I'm interested in buying a company, and they'll have to take the information as I tell them. And the reality is they're probably pitched hundreds or even thousands of times the same story. Now, if you're thinking, hey, Ali, you're coming from an investor's standpoint, of course, the buyer is going to be or seller is going to be interested in talking to you. Now, I'll be that be the case. Not every single seller out there is going to be interested in, in buying a company, right? It's, it's or, or, or selling their company. Most of the times they just want to know that somebody's out there genuinely looking and have interest in their companies in order for them to feel comfortable giving a, a, you know, a sell proposal. And the reason why that happens is because they've built a lot of credibility over the years. They built a very substantial business. They have a lot of loyal customers and they have employees who've been working there for years. So if you just come in with a corporate approach and say, look, I'm going to offer you this, take it or leave it. It doesn't really increase their confidence about you as a business owner or somebody who's an investor to feel comfortable allowing you the position to discuss things with them in terms of terms, how you're going to buy them and so on and so forth. It doesn't even get you through the door. So if you're thinking about buying a business, the approach that you should absolutely take is very personalized. You need to understand why their needs 
uh, have you know correlated in a way that they have to sell now. So in order for us to find that out, we have to investigate, right? So the first thing, no debt. Second thing, understand the business owner's need, who's in the position to sell it, and how can you fit into that picture? The third thing you need to understand when it comes to acquisitions and building wealth is what's your criteria for the type of business that you want to go after? See, a lot of us, we have certain abilities or skills we've built over experiences, whether it be work, whether it be entrepreneurial stuff that we've done in the past, whether or not we're just tied into the education of it. The idea is what can you do so well that will tie really good into a business that you're going to acquire? And the reason I say this is because your expertise will absolutely be necessary. The goal is not to go into a business, hold on to it for a few years and just sit and watch. The goal is to increase the value of a company, right? If you're going to go into a business, I'm assuming that you don't want to be tied to it basically by yourself another job. So if you're looking at as an entrepreneurial spirit and you want to increase the value of a company, you need to know what skill do you bring to the table? Because with that skill set, what's going to happen is you'll be able to go in, add some value gradually to the company. And then from that standpoint, you can actually exit it. And there are financial structures in place that actually can help you create cash flow in the process. But you need to understand what you bring to the table. So once again, number one, no debt. Number two, you have to understand the other side that's selling the business. What's their dire need and how can you solve that problem? Number three, what do you bring to the table that will help the business increase its value, enhance it? make it better than what it was yesterday. The fourth concept I want to talk about is you cannot do it alone. So a lot of people go into the acquisition space think that, hey, I'm the boss of all things. I'm going to go out there and do everything on my own. The problem with that is, again, it's like credit. The only thing you have is your time. So if you're going out there and pursuing transactions, you know, on a month to month basis or, or let's say every week, what's going to happen is you're going to be so tied down to meetings, phone conversations, due diligence, finding financing, trying to work out a structure, work with legal, work with accounting and so on and so forth. It becomes so much information. It, it's just, it, it, it literally is like a huge weight on top of your shoulders and you have to carry it constantly. And as weeks go by, if you're very active, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a lot of work that's gonna stockpile and you're gonna be basically working a full-time job. The idea is work with strategic partners that can help you get to the other side much faster and more reliably instead of having your schedule tied down to the schematics that can be redundant, that can be allocated or even delegated for that matter. The objective is understand that you cannot do it alone. When you go into the business space, the biggest and most critical thing when it comes to acquisition is understanding who is working with you, what you bring to the table, and how well you can work together. The goal is when you come in on a personalized level to the business owner who's selling their business and you show them your expertise and you show them that you absolutely care because you're asking all the right questions and you show them that you have a support team behind you, especially partners, what ends up happening is they build a lot more confidence. And I think that's very important if you're in the acquisition space. Most people think that I'll just go out there, advertise myself, and people will throw their businesses at me so I can look at them and make a choice and be selective. That's not a bad idea, but the goal is you want to accelerate growth and build your wealth. You cannot be stagnated, buy yourself a full-time job, and just be stuck in the same place over and over again. That's not why we're doing acquisitions in the first place. So no, try to do it alone, right? Keep that in mind. And the fifth and final point when it comes to building wealth by buying businesses is that you have to understand what's the end goal. A lot of people go into acquisition space thinking, hey, I'm just going to go out there and buy as many companies as possible, work with a few partners and, and just you know, go get this thing out of proportion. It's a very exciting thing at the beginning, especially those mentees who I'm training right now who are working with me and you know helping them uh, through the process of buying and selling. The biggest critical factor is we have to align ourselves with a goal that's realistic and based on their timelines. The frame of it is, if they are not really sure of what they want and just want to do acquisitions for the heck of doing it, what's going to end up happening is sooner or later, certain financial or personal needs will come down and it's going to pressure them. It's probably not going to help them concentrate on what we have as a bigger picture. The goal is really identify yourself, find some goals. What exactly do you want short and long term? And then we work around that and frame the acquisition targets and everything in terms of structure, in terms of the type of businesses we'll go after, the type of locations that you want to target. And from that perspective, we can do a proper acquisition methodology. So with that said and done, guys, that was the video on why helping yourself through the acquisition process of buying and selling companies can build a lot of wealth and the five reasons why you have to do it the right way and what are some of the key factors. If you love this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to write a comment below based on what you learned. What are some of the things that you would ask me in terms of acquisitions that you want to learn? And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and turn that bell icon on. So every time there's a new video like this, you'll be first to be notified. And if you're interested in acquisitions, if you want to learn, if you want to get part of the mentoring group where I teach you how to go out there 
and work together to buy businesses and add a lot of value to the economy, reach out to me, Ali at alitarafter.com. The link will be below this video or somewhere up here. And then we can schedule a call to see if you're right fit for the program. Because again, it's very limited. I cannot, like I said, I don't want to go out there and spread myself too thin. I have to work with select individuals. And I guarantee you, you're going to be building six to seven figure wealth every year, depending on the strategy we have in place for you. And there's a lot of great stuff out there as well. So with that said and done, this is Ali Tarafter, your guide and mentor. I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.